what's on the docket today? What will we document? Welcome to Doll Dog. Today's doll was inspired by the pinup fashion of the 1950s. I just love the hairstyles and dresses from that decade. If you're new here, please subscribe. I post a new doll video each week. And if you'd like to see more decade inspired dolls, leave me a comment down below. Let's start doctoring. I researched many different pinup hairstyles and sketched out what I wanted my doll's hair to look like. I knew I wanted her to have a natural hair color, so I got out my yarn west to see which would work best for her victory rolls. The black yarn was the easiest to roll, so it was the winner. For her curls that would be loose, I cut the wefts into smaller pieces and wrapped them around the handle of a metal rasp. I used a tiny straightener and lightly clamped it a few times around the hair. I ended up switching to wrapping the yarn around a paintbrush handle instead because the yarn was catching on the rasp handle and not making nice curls. Once I had curled and curled and curled, I began placing them on the wig cap. I like to stagger the curls instead of putting them one on top of the other. I knew with the victory rolls there was a potential to see the edge of the wig cap. So to fix that, I glued a weft to the inside of the cap so when I formed the curl it would help hide the cap. Also plastic film was my best friend when making this wig. I used it to separate and protect the curls as I worked on the other styling. Now I fill in the rest of the cap with wefts. This Saturday, a bonus video on how I make my wefts will be coming out. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to when it's here. Because there would be a lot of hair in these victory rolls, I cut each side shorter so they weren't too big. Then I straighten them again and apply a good layer of hairspray before rolling them up with a makeup brush handle. They wouldn't hold with just hairspray. So I glued each side down, careful not to apply too much so it wouldn't seep out and show. To help the roll stay in place while drying, plastic film came to the rescue.
The base doll I used was a Disney Descendants doll, and luckily I had some of their clothes that were a perfect starting point for patterns. I modified the skirt some to be longer and flare out more. For the bodice piece, the front of the top worked perfect, but I forgot that I made some body modifications to her, so as I went, I had to alter the back pattern pieces some. I started this outfit by sewing a simple halter strap. Then I hem the sides and bottom of the skirt. For the waistline of the skirt, I did a gathering stitch so I could gather it and line it up to the waist of the dress top. For the top, I first stitched the darts. Then I sew the back pieces to the front, placing them right sides together. Then I hem the neckline of the top. Let me know if you all like seeing the outfits step by step or if you'd prefer they be more of like quick clips, giving more focus to other parts of the doll. Now it's time to join the top and bottom of the dress. I line up the waistlines and sew them right sides together. Then I sew close the back of the dress, leaving room for her hips to go through. Next I added the strap. This would have been much easier to do before sewing the skirt on. Using hand stitching, I added a sweetheart neckline shape to the dress. Shoe time! I was happy I had descendant shoes that were similar to the vision I had in mind. I cut and sanded the ruffles off the tops of the shoes and sanded the toe to be more round. I then carefully cut away the parts of the shoe to make a strap, but realized I cut too much. To fix this, I just used some good old epoxy sculpt. Once that was cured, I painted them black, sealed with hard coat Mod Podge, and added a red stripe to tie in with the flowers for her hair and the belt I was making. Now to the body mod I referred to earlier. I trimmed down the seam plastic and buffed away the shine. Then I realized Descendant dolls don't have a dramatic waist like some of the previous dolls I've worked with. And in all my reference photos, the women had hourglass figures. Since I was making her a belt, I decided to sand down her waist some so the belt wouldn't take away from the pinup hourglass figure. Once her body was modified, I sealed her with two layers of MSC, which is Mr. Super Clear, and blushed her body before sealing her again. My pastel color palette for today. I seal her head with three layers of MSC before starting on my first layer of highlighting and contouring.
Then I sketched on her eye placement. Always still before this step. I redid her eye shape several times and was so happy I had sealed my previous work so I could wipe away my mistakes without ruining everything. I'm curious, what is your favorite fashion decade? Let me know down in the comments below. Mine has always been a tie between the 1920s and the 1950s. Now that her eyes are sketched on, I prep my pencils for the lips and eyes. I try to get them as sharp as I can. I went with a brown shadow this time since I wanted her irises and lips to be what stood out. Cotton swabs are great for blending soft pastels on the face. I go through my normal routine of laying down the base color of the eyes, but for the lips this time, I colored them in with a vibrant red to give them that pinup pop. With black I added the brow hairs and eyeliner. With each layer, I like to add highlights and shadows. This brings a lot of life to the face.
For her irises, I pulled up a reference image of an eye. Not so much for the color, but so I could match more of the detailing. My goal is to make the eyes more realistic with each doll I create. I added a light shadow of black pastel under her eyeliner to give dimension to the eyes. With each layer, deepen your colors. I also thickened her eyeliner to give her a nice wing. Her cheeks felt a little bare, so with a light pink I gave her a touch of blush. I always re-sharpen my pencils for the eyelashes. I noticed her lips weren't even, so I went and adjusted the shape some. Now I add the reflections with a white acrylic paint. I know, I get carried away with them at times. I'm trying to get better. I seal the doll one final time with MSC and then add gloss to her lips and eyes. And she's done. She's ready for her photo shoot. I just love her. I kinda wish I had a matching dress. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also turn on the notification bell. I post a new doll video each week. Also a special thanks to No Annie on Fiverr for creating the new intro song. Check them out, their link is down below. Thanks for watching!